Hello, Maria. How are you? Good, doing good. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Um, so my name is Paul, and this is Maria from Graphics. Um, and today we're using a prediction model to find out which factors are more likely to lead to a stroke. So this is actually a very interesting use case because in this case we're using um, strokes, but this could be used for other type of illnesses like cancer or right now it will be very interesting to use it for COVID actually. Yeah. So let's jump into it and see how we can get this done without a single line of code, right? Yeah, nice and easy. Um, so what we did first of all was we uploaded the data set mm -hmm. to Graphics. Um, and then from that, as you can see, the data set had different variables such as age, gender, uh, how, um, if they've ever been married, what a job is, mm. there's a lot of those lines. Mm -hmm. um, we put it through, we chose, chose models and then we chose to put it through train and predict, as I say. Okay. And then with this, we put the different variables as factors, which set about our clusters. Mm -hmm. um, and we set our target as whether or not somebody had had a stroke or not. So our factors are going to explain the target, right? Exactly, exactly. And that will be it? Yeah, we just hit next and then execute. Um, it wouldn't take too long. You're trying, uh, I think this is about 5,000 rows long, so mm -hmm. you're trying to maximum five, ten minutes for it That's all great. to be put through. Um, okay. If we go up to 500,000 rows, then things go a little bit slower, but still quite quick. Yeah, that's normal. Okay. Great, great, great. So, so this is what we get. Yeah, so as you already know, this is how graphics normally looks like. We have a graph in the middle and then one bar at each side with our different variables. Like Paul said, we have gender, age, um, if they are smokers or not, and so on. So um, what we're going to do first is color by suffering stroke, which means coloring um, and see if they suffer it or not. And what we see, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I was yeah. just thinking, you can see the red is people that have had strokes and green is the people that haven't had strokes. Yeah. So if we look at the clusters and maybe sort them as uplift, Okay, we can, so we can click first of all, like who's had a stroke, mm -hmm. and then we can analyze the clusters. They seem to be these ones at the top anyway. Um, so we can change that to by uplift, so we can see which one's the most important. Okay. Yeah, that will be number nine, number three, or number five. Yeah, and cluster one is still quite important, but not as important. Mm -hmm. Okay. Excellent. So, first of all, why don't comp why don't we compare people that had a stroke versus people that never had a stroke? Okay, nice and easy. I'm already that should be already organized. Mm -hmm. So, what do we see here? Right. Okay. So we can see a comparison between people that haven't and people that have had a stroke um, versus with the different variables. So, as you can see, immediately age is a very defining factor. Mm -hmm. um, and people that are older are more likely to have a stroke than people that are younger. Um, yeah, that makes sense. Equally here, you can see a big difference between people that are married, having had a stroke, and people that aren't. Glucose level, you're actually not looking to see too much of a difference here as I thought it would be um, until we get maybe a bit later on. Um, Here's one that's interesting, is work type. Yeah. So you can see that people that are self-employed are probably the most likely to have had a stroke um, mm -hmm. and out of all the different jobs. And then equally private, you can see a little bit it gets ahead of people in the private sector. But the majority of people in this seem to be in the private sector. Mm -hmm. This looks very, very interesting, but I'm wondering... How will this look like if we compare the total amount of people with one of those clusters that had the majority of the people that suffer a stroke? Oh, yeah, as you can see, cluster three seems to be the biggest one here. Okay. So we would just go everything. Yeah. 
and then we would choose one of the cluster, cluster. yeah yeah and then cluster to begin so what are the differences that you see here right this one has a high glucose level which is as we've seen mm -hmm. most problems because of the low strokes um and then age you can still see it there taking control although it's quite early on but it mm -hmm. was really high once you're about 80 your likelihood of being in this cluster is very high yeah um and probably having a stroke um once again we see marriage well and truly ahead being married uh, and things like your work type, work type. yeah or self-employed as well above so it's really just keeping up with the trends in number three across the three. so just to quickly uh, sum up the most important variables um for for stroke prediction would be age which is very obvious in this case um glucose levels right either if they are too low or too high yeah certainly in this one if they're too high mm -hmm. and um the type of job that they have, right? Yeah, so it seems that self-employed people, you don't want to be self-employed if you want to avoid yeah. the I can vouch for this having been self-employed, it's very stressful. And I think, yeah, stress is one of the key factors. Yeah, yeah, you have to be responsible of everything and it could be very, very stressful, I guess, yeah. Yeah, what surprised me was this one about being married. Mm -hmm. If you want to keep yourself healthy and you don't want to suffer a stroke, you've got to keep, see, stay single for most of your life. Yeah, I'm actually very happy that you brought that up because I recently read that um, people that are married are more likely to live longer. So mm -hmm. why don't we go and check um, the ever married factor and see if that's true? Well, so you think it may be based on, like, if you live longer than it has a negative effect because of the fact you have a stroke because you've lived longer because you've been married yeah let's see okay i can get that up so that would be ever married mm -hmm. yes she's ever married no so look at the age variable Ah, uh, yeah, I see it now. So you can see that strokes are a lot more likely with younger people um, that are single and older people that are married. So obviously it's more based on the fact that people live longer. Yeah. Oh, interesting. So this actually reminds me of the Simpson paradox I told you about before. Do you remember? Yeah, yeah, I've got the link you sent for me. Yeah, so I'm just going to explain it very briefly. So it occurs when there appears to be trends in groups of data, but those trends disappear when the groups are seen as a whole. So it's often thought that the trends in the smaller groups of data that we see here are actually causing the trend in the larger group of data. But that's actually not true. In this case, um, we might think that, um, that because married people tend to have more strokes that's the actual reason and that's not true is because they are married they live longer and since they live longer they're more likely to have strokes so what do you think well it's fascinating and maybe i seen as well um if you look here with smoking status as well like people that smoke are like less likely to have strokes but that might be equally because they die earlier and things like that so mm -hmm. It's, it's very interesting that okay well yeah hey, so, yeah, yeah, very so that will be enough for today yeah hey so oh, yeah. by the way i see that you put some flowers there better than a pepper yeah no in the end i chose bouquet versus pepper so if you guys <laughs> don't know what we're talking about go and check out our latest video on market basket analysis and that will be hey, <laughs> that was amazing to go to the previous video. Um, bye, Maria. Lovely speaking to you. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye.